and welcome to the Women's Football Show on LUTV, a brand new programme here on LUTV <laughs> where we look at all things women's football. Of course, we're going to be talking about the Leeds United's women's team, grassroots football and sport and participation for females across the country. Now, on every episode, I'm going to be joined by three guests and on this episode, I'm very lucky to be joined by Abigail Lee, who's the Development Officer for the LUFC Foundation. Thank you for joining us. No problem. I'm joined as well by Bridie Hannon, who is the LUFC Women's Captain. Thanks for joining us, Bridie. Thank you. Pamela. And finally, Dan O'Hearn sat on the end over there, who's the LUFC Women's Head Coach. Thank you for having me. Bit outnumbered here, but you're used to that, aren't you, Dan? I am. Okay. <laughs> now, before we get into some of the specifics on the show today, just a general question to kind of hear from you all. How would you assess the, the sort of the strength of the women's game and what it still needs to work on to progress? I think um, my personal opinion is it's changed quite a lot recently. I think, um, especially off the back of the World Cup, I think we're looking at times changing at the moment. I think a lot more girls are wanting to get engaged in football after seeing the progress of the women's of the women's teams. I think the WSL and the leagues are getting stronger. I think that's a real big improvement across the board. If you agree, playing yourself, I think that's that is really good to see. And I think you're seeing a lot more girls engaged now in comparison to when we were probably younger and playing. You didn't see it as a, a professional sport. You didn't see it as a future. Whereas now, girls can actually see it as a as a profession now, as a job, and that and that's really nice. It's exciting as well, and yeah. we're going to be touching on um, some of that later on in the show as well. Yeah. Bridie, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think for me, from a grassroots perspective, we don't play football for money or for fame. We play because we love the game, mm -hmm. um, and I think people that are coming to watch us. I mean, we get quite a lot of people coming to watch us now on a Sunday. They're, they're actually starting to take note a little bit and think women can play football. Um, and I think a lot of people always comment to me, "We love the fact that women don't roll around on the football pitch." Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> we, we get straight back up, and I think people like that and obviously we are really passionate we're just as passionate as the men um, but obviously like I say we don't get paid half as much as, as, what the men, <laughs> as what the men do but I think Dan touched on it a little bit before about the fact that the promotion still needs to um, be a little bit better as well as the perception so I'll pass you over to Dan because Dan would like to expand on that. <laughs> go on Dan go for it. Yeah it's, it's getting much better obviously uh, with the Women's World Cup you see loads of young girls playing now loads of new teams sprouting up so it's really good. It's really good for the future. Right, so before we chat about the season so far, just a word on last night's abandoned game with Bradford due to injuries to our very own Molly Havard and Bradford's Chelsea Sanford. Uh, Dan, over to you. What's the latest with them? Yeah, Molly's got a dislocated jaw and Chelsea has got a serious head wound. Uh, obviously, both went to hospital last night. Um, both discharged now, so... OK, so they're OK? Yeah, they're OK, yeah. What, what happened? What happened? Just a just a collision, uh, just one of them things in football that happens. And Bridie, I mean, for someone like you who plays the game week in, week out, it's a reminder of how dangerous it can be sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially with it being a local derby as well, obviously yeah. emotions are high and both teams obviously full, you know, we wanted to win. Um, but it was just one of those, I think it was a mistimed uh, challenge. I don't think there was any kind of malice in it. It was it was late. Um, I think she did receive a yellow card. Um, some argue that it could have been a red card, but it was just one of those where sometimes there is more to life than football. Um, and obviously two players were seriously injured down there. Um, as much as we did want to win and obviously we'll replay them again and I'm quite confident that we'll get the win next time around. Definitely. And also, pass on our regards, won't you, to them. We hope that we both get yeah. better very soon. Uh, Dan, uh, we were chatting just before we came on air about the changes over the summer for you guys, such as the name change. Where did that come from? It's the, uh, it's the new thing in women's football. Everybody's calling the team women instead of ladies, so uh, a lot of major teams are, are going that way. Well, it certainly makes my job tough, going Leeds United's women's with a list <laughs> like this. <laughs> um, but there's been other changes as well, different players and stuff uh, throughout the summer. How's all that going for you? Yeah, I think this season before, we, we brought quite a lot of players in and, and it unsettled mm. uh, the existing players. So this season, it, were, it was about bringing maybe not so many uh, new players in, but trying to integrate uh, the players that we, we was bringing in. And, and, it's, and for me, it's about... It's about the person first and foremost, rather than the player. OK, they've got to be good players, but I look at the person. Uh, they've got to fit into what we want to uh, achieve. Well, Bridie, obviously, uh, as captain, you're a crucial part of that team. How is it, or how is it going? What's the team dynamic like? 
I think it's a really good team spirit, to be fair. I think, um, you know, one thing that you do quite often see in, in women's football, and I think women's sport in general is clicks. I don't feel like we've got that at all at Leeds United. Um, I think we all get on really well. Uh, we're trying to do a bit more kind of like social activities outside as well, but I think you can see with the way we're playing, especially with the pre-season that we've had, how we want to work as a team and we do fight together. Obviously, last night was taking fight to, I mean. a, to a new level. Um, but no, I think uh, we've got a really good team spirit this year. And you have some local girls as well in the team, don't you? Well, majority are local, yeah. to be fair. There's a lot of um, Leeds United fans in there, season ticket holders, and I think it makes it even more special when you pull on the shirt on a Sunday, as cliche as that sounds, but um, I think when you do actually support the club that you play for, it does. It is uh, even better. We do have a few people from North East, don't we? We've nicked a couple of them. Um, <laughs> but they're but Can't blame them. I know, but, but they're quality players, and I think when you look at the team that we've got this year, we have added quality where we've needed to, um, so hopefully we'll uh, go on and have a successful season. And how tough is it playing in uh, the Women's National League North? What is that like? It's a really difficult league. It is very similar to the Championship, yeah. which is what the men are playing in. I think there's only one that gets promoted. Um, and it's one of those where anybody can beat anybody. Mm. You know, it, it doesn't matter where you are in the league. You've literally got to take every game like it's a cup final. Um, there's no easy games in this league. So that's why it's really challenging to get promoted. And, and Dan, for you, what do you do as the coach to work and build and improve on last season? We spoke about consistency at start season. That's what let us down last season. Uh, I think we're good enough on his day to match any team in that league, but um, consistency is the key word for us this season. Um, so we have got to be more consistent. I think one no holidays. That... We no. know Friday, <laughs> Friday the captain's got to book a holiday to Santorini, <laughs> so yourself right out there. No holidays. Do you know what? I think one thing that Dan's done differently this year is you've done a little bit more homework and stuff on, on the other team. So we've got um, a team app that we all use, and before we play anybody, Dan does his homework in terms of you know what formations the opposition play, who's the danger players, where the other teams are quite weak in areas, and it you know we don't necessarily change our tactics to them, but it's important for us to know. Wait a minute, who do we need to keep an eye on and things like that? And yeah. I think you'd be daft not to. The players are getting a lot more information this season than they have done previously. Uh, it's taken me a lot of time, uh, <laughs> but that's what the job's about. And all the information, you know, if they just take one little bit out of it and it helps us to win the game, then. Sounds like I should well. have introduced you as Bielsa Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> he tries, he tries. Yeah, he gets, <laughs> weather conditions, though. Yeah, yeah, weather conditions, you yeah. know, everything. Yeah. Wow, that is yeah. impressive. And, and what's your relationship like with Leeds United as a football club? Day to day, week to week, what's that like? Well, obviously, we're training up at Thor Patch and playing up there. Um, the club have backed us, obviously, with LUTV as well, getting involved. Uh, but, you know, it's great to have the club back involved mm. with, with the women's team. And is, is it good having those kinds of facilities, Bridie, for you as a player? Yeah, I think so. Um... I mean, just like when you turn up to training and stuff, I think every day, you know, well, I say every day, when we tra when we do train, you realise how lucky you are when you're driving up the gates at Thorpe Arch and, like, coming to Ellen Road and, been, you know, doing things like this and the, the fact that we get the highlights and stuff and the interviews that go on the app, it's just different to anything that I've ever experienced before, so it is amazing. Yeah. And it gives it that professional edge, doesn't mm -hmm. it, that makes you as a player want to perform better as well in, in certain aspects, I think. It attracts players as well. Yeah, of course it does. Look. Well, on that, Abby, in terms of attracting players, how important is it for you to have a solid and professional Leeds United's women's team in order to attract the sort of grassroots level football? Yeah, of course it is. I think it's, I think it's really important, really, because if you think about anybody in this region in terms of young girls, they will look up to these players. Absolutely. They'll look up to that squad and they'll even be mascots or... Even if they see a highlight of the women's game, but then and then they say to the parents, "Oh, I actually want to go and get involved in football, mm. or I want to go." That's where the players at Leeds are big role models, and that's where it's quite important. They've got to influence the girls how they can. So, if a young girl does want to go and get involved in football, then that's their job done in a way because they're they're showing the next generation you you can get involved. Absolutely, which is say, nice, isn't it? I would say in terms of like all the clubs in Yorkshire that you've got, like obviously you've got the teams around Leeds, but even when you look at your Sheffield teams or your Newcastle teams, Sunderland, yeah. whichever, Leeds is by far the best kind of I would say community run club but also yeah. just together as a team as well yeah. there's a hell of a lot more you know togetherness about this club than there yeah. is any other club that I know incredible well Dan we know that obviously you do your research before the games before the girls go out and play um it's been it's been an up and down season so far already for you um but are you more performance focused than results focused uh, <laughs> like, obviously I want good performances but yeah. I, need, I need the results as well um like last night I said in the changing rooms if mm. we win 1-0, 10-0, I'm not bothered, mm. as, but we're back getting the three points last night, obviously. 
uh, we were two 0 up and the game got mm. abandoned. So. And one of the um, Leeds United women's team, when have they impressed you the most so far this season? First game of the season against Liverpool Feds. Yes. They was the only team to do the double honours last season and, and we beat them 1-0 mm. and we deserved to win. Um, then we're going to Burnley the second game, which is the League Cup there in the league above. And for 80 minutes on a boiling hot day, it was 0-0. Um, they've scored in 81st minute cup match. We start pushing for an equaliser. They get to win in duty time. And the scoreline looks bad, 3 yeah. 0, but it wasn't a 3 0 scoreline. No, you were impressed with their performance. The yeah, night, yeah. Performance. Well, um, Bridie, I've got to ask you how much do you believe that you could genuinely push for promotion this season? I really want to be able to sit here and say we're going to win the league, and I absolutely hope that we can. And I think it's like what I said when you put our 11 players against any other 11, I would back ourselves. Um, but it's like what Dan says, it, it's, it's all right having 11 fantastic players or 15, 16 players in the squad, but you have to perform on a weekly basis and you can't switch off for 10 minutes and let other teams concede yeah. three. Um, so I think, you know, it is really important that we try and get that. And it is a shame last night because it would have been a really good win. And, you know, we talk about consistency and winning habits and things like that. Mm. We want to go into the next three games that we've got, you know, with that winning mentality. So it is a shame that the game got abandoned last night because we were definitely on top. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll see you at the end of the season as champs. Fingers crossed. Well, you've got loads more games to look forward to. Starting with Chorley at home on Sunday, Chester Street away, Brighouse at home. So I imagine, Dan, you know the weather forecast for all the places <laughs> already, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I've, I've been speaking to Paul the weatherman. So. <laughs> um, but are you looking forward to Sunday's game, Friday? Yeah, absolutely. It's always a tough game against Chorley. It's like it's one of these kind of unknown teams. You never know what you're going to get when they turn up because I think they do tend to have quite a change of, of uh, personnel. But um, um, yeah, I guess it's, it's just that thing where we've got to go in 100% again and treat it like a cup final, as we always do. Absolutely. And for you, Dan, obviously you're going to be t determined to win all three games that you've got coming up. But which one for you is going to be the toughest, do you think? Uh, Brighouse. Mm -hmm. That's a local derby. Um, to put it in a nutshell, they don't like Leeds United. So it's always a big game. Well, maybe Leeds United don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the so, managers don't like each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always a big game, so, yeah. Right, well, get on your app and make sure you check every <laughs> single thing. Right. right, throughout the season on LUTV, we'll have highlights of every single game and post-match reactions, so make sure you keep your eyes on the official Leeds United website and app after every game. And as well as that, we are going to be making sure that we get to know each and every single one of the Leeds United women's teams. And we're going to start that today with goalkeeper Georgia Watton. Georgia Watton, 21, goalkeeper. <laughs> Probably watching my, my older brother play football from the side, so standing at the sidelines. Purely love, passion and just desire really. Definitely Karen Barsley playing for England. I wouldn't necessarily say who, I'd probably say England World Cup. Um, had a massive impact on general everywhere really. It's, was a massive thing for everyone to watch. In men's football, probably like a Steven Gerrard goal. Work hard, desire, do it for your love. Um, obviously, there's a difference between men and women, money-wise, um, your ego. Just do it for what you love, really, um, your desire. I'm hoping on par with um, the men's football, it's taken off after the World Cup. This is the Women's Football Show on LUTV and as well as discussing the ups and downs of the game, we're going to find out more about grassroots football and one person who can help us dig into that and find out what's go what goes on at Leeds United behind the scenes and how we build on that is Abby. So just tell us, Abby, what exactly it is that the foundation do? So in terms of girls football, we've got quite a lot going on at the moment, to be fair. Um, we've got a Wildcats program so the Wildcats program is basically getting girls aged 5 to 11 engaged in sport in football so we basically where we've got 50 centres at the minute we're near enough 50 centres where we're going into schools or grassroots clubs and we're putting on just girls only sessions so this is quite an important factor really because it's all about engagement it's not about going in and putting on the best session and they, they've been the best footballers. It's all about introducing them to football, introducing them to fundamentals. So. And what kind of reaction do you get from that when you do it? Brilliant, to be fair. So we've got a really good reaction coming off this programme. So 
we've got one that goes on on a Saturday morning, which has actually got near enough 40 girls engaged. Wow. Yeah, so that's just from setting up from a Wildcat session, saying to the girls, you can come on down, and now it's generated up to 40 girls that they're now starting their own grassroots clubs. So that's, that's yeah, that's showing that it's really working. And as I said earlier, and as I was saying to, to Bridie, when we were younger or when we were playing football, when I were a young girl, you didn't really have them opportunities. Mm. So obviously now girls are getting a lot more opportunities in football. So it, it's good. And have you found, because obviously you're there, you're, you're actively seeing it, have you found that there's been any stigma attached to it? Have any of the girls said, oh, I don't think I should be playing football or this isn't for me and you've had to break that down? Um, I, I actually, we did an assembly, so we went into one school and she, um, we put on the assembly and we basically said to the girls, put your hands up if you've had any like negative um, feedback about playing football. Mm. And one girl just put her hand up and she was just like, oh, the boys don't want me to play football. So she was probably better, she's than, better than them. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and I think that's what's quite good for us girls to go into to schools mm. and sort of be that figurehead because it's sort of saying to the to the kids like it's it's fine. It's and do you know what? She's come along to every session and she's loved it. Amazing. And that for me is job like job done in the sense. Definitely. And Bridie, for you hearing that um, now playing pro football professionally. That must be great for you to hear that at grassroots level that's happening. It's really good, yeah. And, you know, like when you play for Leeds United, you're a role model anyway. Yeah. Even yeah. if they've, they've never seen you play, you're still a role model because you play for Leeds United. I mean, just thinking back to when we did the kit launch, um, you know, we went into the club shop afterwards and even teenage lads were coming over asking us for, for photos, which that would never happen. Wow. That I, I can't, We were really surprised. They were like, oh, girls, can we have a photo with you? And they were really proud to be, but it's because it's Leeds United and this yeah. is the whole the whole thing about this whole togetherness. There's a lot, a lot of, of hype around it. Yeah. it is. Um, and Dan, for you, because obviously you've been involved in the game long enough, uh, have you seen have you seen a change in sort of the reaction towards women's football the response to it yeah but I still read read things on social social media that irritate me uh, from you know from males saying that women should be in the kitchen on a Sunday afternoon and stuff like that and that they need to get into the 21st century. I do sense though that that is a, a, my, a, a minority. Yeah, yeah it is a minority, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We had quite an interesting conversation earlier saying that I think if you sort of involved, your daughter is involved in football or um, you know somebody who plays women's football, you're much more engaged in it naturally and I think, I think it's almost just giving it a go, mm -hmm. even just spectating it or people that you say about social mm. media and stuff i think even if you just went down to a Leeds united game and watched for one for one sunday and you'd actually get quite attached to it and it, it is a nice it is a nice feel to watch to watch women's football because it's quite it's inclusive yeah. and it's very like it's a nice environment and i think it's a lot more there is a little bit of a stigma but i think that stigma is always going to be there but then that's a nice thing for girls to beat that stigma mm. i think yeah to break it yeah. down yeah. exactly and, and, and it's great for you guys to all be a part of that go on i think you? people would be surprised if they came down to watch a, a women's yeah. game no, I agree. you know the technical ability uh tactical knowledge mm. fitness yeah but it's like you're saying, it's about the minority as well. Like when I do see pictures and stuff that Leeds United post of us or the highlights, there's a lot of positive comments as well. Yeah. Um, and I love seeing that, you know, people put, you know, all Leeds that way and it doesn't matter if it's the ladies team, the juniors team, yeah. if they support Leeds United, the majority of them do, do support. Well. Yeah, they want us to do well. They want us to, they, you know, they want us to get promoted and be in that top league. So it is a shame, like Dan says, that there is that minority of players, um, of people, sorry. But yeah, for the most part, it's positive. It's definitely changing and that's yeah. 100%. to see. Yeah. And of course, yeah. the World Cup will have had at least some impact on that because there was so yeah. much hype around it. Have you seen a change since then, Abby? Um, I, particularly, yeah, I think it's a more awareness, I'd say. Yeah. I don't know if you agree, but I think it's more... Um, even just people watching it on TV, so it might be a parent's attitude that, oh, we've just watched that women's f that women's game and it were it were really interesting and they enjoyed it. And do you know what? If she does want to go out inside and play football, we're going to go and help her, or we're going to help her f fulfill a dream of wanting to do it. I Absolutely. think I think it's just I think we're in a situation where we see a lot of men's football, we see a lot of men's football on TV. It's it's a lot on social media, but for the World Cup, it were. It was quite an exciting time to watch and you, you felt like the nation got behind the yeah, women's team definitely. at that time, which were really nice. A nice I, I spoke to a lot of my friends who don't watch women's football and they, they got 
you know involved in it and and they loved it to be fair it is it was yeah. it was so, it was great to see and that's why i ask because i'm always yeah. interested to know with things like that whether it's the hype that's concentrated around that time because yeah. they're there and they're doing well and the nation's behind them and whether that dips off but obviously yeah. as you say abby you've seen it continue yeah. thereafter yeah. um yeah. on that then bridie i just want to ask you what would you say to anyone watching this who wants to ultimately play football who's who's a woman who wants to play it professionally um, I think they need to, a lot of players start off obviously at grassroots and then work their way up and I think like I always said there's more um, like talent centres about and like centre of excellence and things like that and there, there wasn't necessarily all these back in the day so because it is getting more and more and obviously there's more media coverage and stuff um, I think you've got to work your way but you've also got to know you know which clubs are supported by the men mm. like we have got a pathway now um, and, and we do have like a five year plan so to speak to, to be in the Super League um, there's other clubs which will never get there because they're never going to have the backing of the men they're never going to be able to generate the money um but like Leeds united it's definitely a club where um, so we're going to sign you up <laughs> so come, come to Leeds united yes um, do it yes <laughs> Right then, it's time for that part of the show where we look at some of the wider issues in the game and we invite you and our guests to bring them to us and we'll ask the question. I think today the question that we've got to ask is, particularly touching on the fact that we've um, been talking about the men's game and the women's game and how women are viewed in football, um, do you think it's important, Abby, that we see the two as totally different entities? Personally, yeah, and I think this has always been probably my opinion on women's and men's football. I think we're so quick to view it as the men's game. We're so quick to view it as it should be, as as I don't want to say exactly, but as fast as the men's game, it should have the same viewing as the men's game, and and it doesn't. And that that's just a fact that there's not as much money generated in the the female game. Mm. And as Bridie said earlier, it is a lot of women, especially in the lower leagues, they play for enjoyment. They play for for. Basically, they want to go socially and they want to enjoy themselves. But if you go higher up the leagues, I think now it is changing and people will enjoy watching more. But you've got to view it as it's women's sport. It's, yeah. it's women's football. It's it's not men's football. And I think that's part of that. Acknowledge that's not saying that women's football isn't as good as men's football. That's just it's a different entity. Yeah, it's just it's different. It's it stands alone. It doesn't need to always be well. It's not men's football. Well, yeah. men wouldn't do that. Well, no, that it's the female game. Give the females the credit for the female game. I think it's not going to compare in terms of the money and things, but I think the opportunities should still be the same. Yeah, definitely. So, like, this year, um, I went down to Wembley to watch the FA Cup final. Mm. Previous to that, they were playing in kind of, like, League One, uh, mm. little stadiums yeah. and things like that, whereas now they are getting the opportunities and, you know, travelling the world and playing in a World Cup and things like that. So they are getting more opportunities, but like Abby says, I don't think it's ever going to be yeah. on par with the men. Would you agree with that, Dan? Yeah, there's two things for me. Uh, difference: uh, the pace of the game, the men's obviously a lot yeah. quicker, and and the power, and that's genetics. But everything yeah. else, technical, tactical, fitness-wise, uh, the women are right up there. Absolutely, they yeah. are. Uh, well, we've got so many great things happening in the women's game at the minute. We've got um, England playing Norway on Tuesday night. Phil Neville, of course, been nominated as FIFA Women's Coach of the Year. Uh, WSL, as you touched on earlier, Abby, have secured yeah. their first overseas TV deal. Do you think all of this then, Dan, I'll ask you, is going to help with numbers through the gates? Um, hopefully, yeah. Uh, I know Man City play Man United this weekend and they've sold 20,000 tickets. Wow. So that's that's massive. Uh, but we need we need more and more of that. But but it is a huge step forward having all of these things, isn't yeah. it, Abby? And that helps with someone in your role because it's that exposure thing again, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. And I think as long as women's sport is getting, women's football is getting its its back in, and it's getting social media, and it's getting it all these things, even anything that goes goes out about women's football and people are viewing it, then for me that's that's good in itself because it's getting more exposure. The more exposure it gets, the more people it'll generate it just like like Dan says about 20,000 this this weekend uh, um, is brilliant incredible for a, yeah, yeah for a women's game is brilliant and it just needs more going down it just needs generating fans and how that and I think as well we can look to America where obviously the domestic game there is huge mm. Bridie as someone who plays over here is that kind of the aim for you that it could end up being that big here yeah, it could be. I think it's already well on its way to, mm -hmm. to be like that. And I think in years to come, it will be. Um, I did. I was lucky enough to play football in America. So I, I saw front hand how 
um, how exciting and how big it was. It was, I think, it was bigger than the men's football over there as well. Couldn't stay away from here, though, soccer, could you? soccer, as they call it. No, I came back. <laughs> Leeds United had my heart. Yes. Um, but yeah, no. So it's definitely getting that way. But whether it, it you know, it's the same scale as America, who knows? But um, you know, the more the more media that goes out, the more social aspect. Um, like I said, I think you know, Leeds United. Legion United Women, should I say, I think we're forefront in that, so I think Absolutely. we just need to keep going. Well, before we wrap up, just remind us again what your next few games are and where they're going to be. Oh, good question. So, so it's so Charlie, Charlie at Thorpe Arch on Sunday, 3pm mm -hmm. um, kickoff. And then you've got Chester La Street Chester and Brighouse. Street, yeah, Chester La Street is the Sunday after, and that's away. And then the Big House game is at home, Thorpe Arch. It's free entry, anybody can come down and watch us. There we go, free entry, so get yourselves there. And as Abby was saying, if you get there and you get bedded in, you realise just how good of a game it is to watch. Um, now, Abby, where can people go as well for more information on the foundation and how to get involved? If they've got in the Leeds website and then forward slash foundation, we've got a whole page there of what's going on in terms of women's football, all the other programmes that we're doing. So just head on to there, really. Perfect. Well, Abby, Bridie and Dan, thank you so much for joining us on our very first LUTV Women's Football Show. We're going to be back here in October with three guests. Might be you, might not be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we'll have you back. Um, and, of course, a very best of luck to you thank guys you. as you uh, as you face Chorley on Sunday. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.